Oh, mighty elite spellbinder is so good here. So good. Let's hope they don't have two gold spender. What up, brothers and sisters, and welcome to MTG Malone with me, Matches Malone. Thank you all so very freaking much for tuning in. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. Before we do anything, tomorrow there's a live stream. 2 p.m. No, 3 p.m. Central. Uh, no, come on, Malone. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. Central European Time. There will be a live stream where we will be announcing the winners of the giveaway live on stream. They will be drawn. And if you want to be one of those two people winning 20,000 gems, well, there's a link right here over my head. And if you want to be one of my patrons winning some other prizes, well, you can check out the patron and a membership because there is a special giveaway for all of my patrons members. And talking about patrons members, we have a new Zedru, uh, not Zedru, we have a new gold span dragon coming our way. Alessandro Maschi, thank you so very freaking much. And Load6, Thank you so much for upgrading to Gold Span Dragon. Also, if you're wondering why I'm so confused, I was uh, hosting a tournament yesterday. And uh, it was by GG Tour. There was a set finals invitational spot on the list. So if you won a tournament, you just got invited straight to the set finals of Kamigawa Neon Freaking Dynasty. It was a thousand dollar prize pool. And me and the Ninja were the commentators. And I have to say it was amazing. The tournament was won by Keys, so congratulations, it was very, very good. And uh, so enough with the yammering, let's get into the tournament winning, hammering. So of course the tournament was best of three, and uh, it, it makes sense, you know, best of three tournament, just always, it's just a normal thing to do, and it was standard but with the new bannings and everything. So that means that people had to come up with stuff. And we still had two wizard lists making it to top eight, but we also had this very beautiful Orzhov mid-range list. And once I saw this list, I was like, this is so good. I have a very good feeling that this will win the tournament. So and in the end, it freaking did. I didn't call it right away. Like there was other horses in the stable that I was very interested about, but this one, mm, mm, mm. it was just freaking amazing. So, and that is also why keys won, key to victory. Here it is. So the list is just super resilient and super aggressive and just slamming in there. And you know, now with the divide by zero gone and the infinite turns gone, People have to start, like find other ways. And this list just sneaks under the radar of these is it lists and just gets in there before they can finish you off. And how does it do it? Well, one of the most important cards in here is the wedding announcement. Not only does it give you a little human for three turns or a card if you attack in with two, but uh, you want a human to be honest, unless you have no more cards. But then it turns into an anthem effect for all of your creatures. All of your creatures get plus one, plus one. Not only like vampires, not only like humans, not only like zombies, everything. Everything gets plus one, plus one. If you have two of those, it gets even bigger. If you have four of those, they get ginormous. Just imagine attacking in with a hive of the eye tyrant that now is a 5-5. Five five. That is super good. Imagine having two spiders out that now are three fives. Uh, three fives, yeah, then now a three twos, or maybe even four threes. That is just super freaking good. So, there we have the Edgar, that just, as the ninja said yesterday, poops out little vampires every single turn once it dies. Super good card. And one of the best cards in the meta right now that divide by zero is gone, Vanishing Verse. Yes, it only targets monocolored permanents. But you know how many of those monocolored permanents are really, really good? Like the Loth, like the Sorin, like the Luminarch Aspirant and Mono White, or only Mono Green even. This card is insanely good. And if you can, if your deck is like Esper, if your deck is like Orzov, if your deck is Mardu, or just, you know, whatever you want. Four colors, five colors, play the Vanishing Verse. It is by far the best removal right now. It exiles, so we don't care about blood on the snow. And it's just super freaking strong. So, what else does the ad have for it? Well, as I said, just bring it down a creature every single freaking turn. And it never stops. It always keeps on 
give in. So we have the Edgar to do that. We have the Loth to do that. We have the uh, Sauron and the Myrtlers to do that. We even have two Adelines in here that bring down a little human every single turn. And if you have two wedding announcements, well, those humans are three threes attacking in right away. So that is what I mean with this deck is super aggressive. Then we have the Luminarch Aspirant. If you have a Luminarch Aspirant in your starting hand, you're happy about it. This is just such a good card, especially in standard where it still gets a counter at the beginning of combat on your turn. You, if you have two Luminarch Aspirants, it is super hard for your opponent to ever come back. You get out of the way of Meadog Massacres, you get out of the way of Burn Down the Houses and all of that shabwang. Then we have the Tainted Adversary. I was very curious about that card, but you know if you play this late game and they have like two or three creatures on the field, but now you pay like the three cost two times, now you get four zombies. And a 2-3 with, uh, with Death Touch. That is just insanely good. Just a 2-mana two 2-3 two, with Death Touch is already insanely good. And even though this fella only has one arm, he has a very cool hat. And those zombies. And you know where the arm is? In the zombie's hand right there. Is it maybe the zombie's arm? Could be. But could also be the Tainted Adversary's arm. Uh, arm. So, super good card in the late game. You just slam in there with the last bit of damage. And if you have your Meadok Masker out and they even block your creatures, that is still one damage coming their way. So that is super insanely good. Then we have the Valky to disrupt their game as much as we can. And uh, later on in the late game, we can play the Valky as a freaking Tybalt because we do have the four Needle Verge pathways and we do have uh, the four Blight Step pathways. I got to sneeze. <laughs> oh my Lord, where did that come from? So you will be able to play your Tybalt if you really freaking want to. But normally by turn 7, you already sealed the deal and there is no need to do it. And if you want to turn into something of theirs, you can do so in the early game with the freaking Valky. There we have the Elite Spellbinder. Like in the best of three version, there was uh, only two of those. I put in one more. So just so you know, this is my best of one version. And uh, put in one more Elite Spellbinder because the card was just so clutch yesterday. And I think that being able to make something cost a little bit more like a board wipe or something like that, is just super good. Maybe a Kraken. If they have a 9 mana Kraken, that is super useless. They don't need that any freaking more. And Liam, we went over it. Then we have two Enrico Domnatis. If we have like little humans or little vampires or whatever, the Enrico Domnati, each player sacrifice a creature, can be extraordinarily good. And you know, getting through through the air is just insanely good. And uh, you know, if you transform the Enrico Domnati, she will become a 3-4. But if you have like your wedding announcement, now she will be a 4-5 or maybe even like a 5-6. With flying, death touch and freaking lifelink. So if they have a gold span dragon, it doesn't matter too much, you know. It just does not matter matter. Same with the Sauron blockers. Those are two threes, but they will become three fours or even four fives. And if your Edgar is out, all of these vampires will become even freaking bigger. So this vampire package is super nice. Sauron also helps you find cards. Same with the love. So these two are our card draw of freaking choice. Then we have the Soul Shatter to destroy those freaking gold span dragons. We have one the rest. Because there was only duresses in the sideboard, but I cut some cards out and put in the duress and one elite spy banner. I think I also cut like a land. Did I cut one? I cut two lands. Put in the elite spy banner and the duress. So this land again, deck originally had 25 lands plus the Emiria's call, which is also super interesting card in here. Because you just make yourself the angels in the late game and just slam in there. Give all of your creatures indestructible until end of turn apart from angels. It's just super freaking a good land wise we have one cave of the frost dragon we have three beautiful pop ross planes we have three hive of the eye turn two beautiful pop ross swamps with the three bright, bright climb pathways the three shattered sanctum four blight path pathways blight step pathways and four needle verge pathways we only need one red source so you might play these as black and as white whenever you need in the end you just need one single red source for the tibble but you can freaking hear of it. So once more, congratulations to Keys for getting the spot in the set freaking finals. That is just so amazing. And this deck list totally freaking deserved it. So yeah, once more, tomorrow live stream, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. Central European Time. Make sure to be here. We will be here on Twitch, uh, on YouTube, and we will be on Twitch. So choose your poison and come over there. I'm Matches Malone, and I will see you in those vampiric games. Oh, standard, baby.
We will see if we can beat him up. I mean, we were on 97%. We will see tomorrow in the live stream. We still have time to uh, get back on top and we will see if that works out. Alrighty, I don't like this end, not in the slightest. I mean, we do have the Vanishing Verse, but uh, is it really worth keeping here? I mean, all we need is one black source, but that is the thing. Either one black or a white source is good, honestly. You know what? Let's gamble. Let us freaking gamble. Alright, we do have the Valky here, and if we're up against Izzet, we can at least steal the freaking gold span dragon. Oh, and we are. We are up against Izzet. Alright. So we haven't found a freaking land yet. That is bad, but we're getting rid of the Smoldering Ring Egg right away. Right away. Not even chilling one turn. They could have a counter spell. I don't want to see that uh, stuff around here. So, there you go. Two counters from the egg already taken. And uh, yeah, I just hope that we find a land here. I mean, chance are pretty high. Chance are like, uh, where is my... There it is. There it is. Chance are 41% to find a land here. I mean, that's something, you know? It's not nothing. And there you go. There you uh, go. Alrighty. So are we going with the Adeline 1 bajillion percent? Just being super aggressive. We can play the Valky later. We do have the Soul Shatter. So once they do play down a gold span rank, we're, we're good. We're good. Nothing to worry about. Not yet, at least. Not yet. So the Soul Shatter in hand is super, super good against those gold span dragons. Okay, nice. They come in pairs. Like, uh, if, you, if you know about this card, you know. Expressive duration always comes in pairs. So we will see how this turns out. Oh my lord, I'm still so tired from the tournament yesterday. It went way too long. Way too long. Alright, here's a land, I guess. I bet they're playing this as a land. One bajillion percent. Yup. Oh my, the Elite Spellbinder is so good here. So good. Let's hope they don't have two gold spender. I shall eat my words. I shall eat them. But I still feel like we have a good chance here, you know? Gold Span Dragon, yes, comes down, but we do have the Soul Shatter. They don't have a counter spell, so that is pretty much alright. And uh, once we play this Enrica Domnati, what are they going to do here? Like, honestly, we just transform her into glory? And, uh, yeah. Well, there's no glory here, is there? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six. So. During their upkeep, we make them sacrifice the gold span dragon. If they don't have an answer here, we just over freaking run them, you know? And that is what's up. That is what is freaking up. They can play the gold span dragon here, but then what? Then what? They could also play the uh, the alchemist's gambit here, but then what? And they scoop! I told you, this deck preys upon. Is it? Like there is no tomorrow. It is just so fast. All we had was three freaking lands, and we still freaking beat them. Mm. Get out of here, is it? Get out of here. So, and I say once more, this deck would not be possible without the bannings. We're up against Hero. You be my hero. I don't know the lyrics to the song. Opponent's going first. You can always see that if the game takes so long to load. Normally the opponent's going first. I don't know why that is. I don't know what's the logic behind that. And about it is. It just is. Okay, we have the beautiful hand here. Turn 1 Duress is super good. Turn 2 Vanishing Verse open into Wedding Announcement. And uh, we will see what the opponent's packing here. Maybe it is beautiful, maybe it is super annoying. Who knows? Who freaking knows? Alrighty. So we're getting rid of this Agurda Splendor here. One million percent. Like a bajillion percent. Okay, if they're going with the Voice of the Blessed here, they are. Interesting. Pretty interesting. Alrighty. So we keep up our Vanishing Verse, we drew an Edgar, which is super good. Because, yeah, we can play it very soon, and I like that. I liked it a lot. So, is there a need to get rid of this Voice of the Blessed right away? I don't feel like there is. I just don't feel like there is. Oh my lord, the land here. Perfection. Freaking per 
faction. I don't think that they will fateful absence my uh, my little token here. That would be a little over the top, you know, and just just a little bit over the top. And uh, you know, this aura doesn't help them too much if there's nothing in their graveyard. So yeah, I feel like just bringing down the uh, the Edgar here is the right choice. We could also go with the Adeline, but then what? Then freaking what? They get rid of the Adeline, so let's bring down the Adgar that forces them to use the Fateful Absence here. And uh, yeah, we still have the blockers, so it's all good. We can just block the Voice of the Blessed here if we want to. The Skyclay- Ah, oh, that on the other hand is a very very good answer here, not gonna lie. Not a gonna freaking lie. Alright, only getting in with you alright makes sense. And uh, yeah, let them. Just let them. Just let them freaking do it. We will have some blockers later on, so that is alrighty. That is pretty much alrighty. So, we're paying the three life here. It looks a little bit cheeky maybe, but we will see if they even have something in hand here. If they do, it will be ours now. It will be ours. For the taken. For the freaking taken. They do have something. Alrighty. All freaking righty. So we're going with the Adeline here, because it's just, you know, board state. And uh, yeah, that totally makes sense. I would have done the same. But still, we do have the board state and they have nothing in their graveyard, so if they attack in here with the aura now, that is not the bestest they could do here, you know? Just not the bestest. Alright, so we do have these two vanishing verses, so I'm pretty happy about that. The Cleric of Life spawn makes things a little bit iffy here, to say the least. But you know, I still feel like we have two very good targets here. Yeah, that, uh, I was just about to say, are you sure you want to do that? Are you really sure you want to do that? So, we're getting rid of the Righteous Valkyrie here, one bajillion percent, and uh, now we are attacking in with the Adeline. I mean, it's a lot of pressure coming their way, you know? And I feel like they will block with nothing here. Well, they will block my human here with the aura, but we do have the Vanishing Verse, so it's all still okay. It is still all A-OK, -okay, you know? Now it's Top Deck Wars. Top Deck Wars. And they had uh, 12 cards, they have drawn 5 lands. So the chance that you find something other than a land are here. They are freaking here. Oh my, interesting. Pretty interesting. Alright, let's do this then. Let's freaking do this then. So yes, the voice of the blessed gets a little pump here, but that is kind of it. And uh, we might find answers here sooner or later. And they might just have a land on top. Like I just hope they do. I just freaking hope that they have a land on top. Alright, they're just attacking in like this. That is crazy to me. That is indeed freaking crazy to me. Alright, we're doing it like this just in case they do have an answer. Like a vanishing verse in hand or something like that. I wouldn't like that to happen, you know? Not in the slightest. Alright. So they're getting rid of two little humans and they just scoop! They- I was sitting here using my brain force and they just scoop! I mean, yeah. Why not? Go ahead. Scoop. I I'm okay with that. Mmm. <laughs> so we're two to all right now. And as you can see, this deck is pretty freaking geared. Just very good. Even the best of one just showing its true power. We're going first. I love it. And I love this hand. I will keep it. If we're up against not a creature based deck, well, that is amazing. The Valky is just super good to steal whatever they have. <coughs> I'm sorry. Later on, we go to the Elite Spellbinding. Let's go with a white here. We'll see how we do this, like, I think I'm going to use the black here and see what we do later on. But one white is always freaking needed. Alrighty. So we're up against, uh, like, yeah, control. One million percent. Oh my. Oh my. This is pretty nice to have here. But let's take this one. Let's just take it. Alright. Like no card draw for them. 
Just none so ever. Will they just foretell the Doomscar? Will they use the Circle of Confinement? They're going with the Circle of Confinement. Kind of makes sense. But that also means that we can just uh, get rid of their Doomscar here, which is super good. I like it a lot. And we go with the white here. We do have the black here in hand as well, so we can do that later on. But getting rid of their Doomscar here just feels very good, you know? Just feels very, very powerful. Alright. So the Cathilda will be a 2-2. Which is a little bit annoying, but they're going with the Brian Comber. Okay, interesting. So I will be going with the Sorin the Murphilurus here, and uh, just like build a board presence, and then we will see. Like sadly, this little spirit here is super annoying for us right now. The borrowed time, just right away, just not even chilling one second. Well, that is all right with me. Like yeah, we looked at their hand; they didn't have it before. What am I supposed to do here? But you know, this is just very nice. The Loth, just a little bit nicer even. So uh, yeah, slowly but surely we're getting there. If we can find like a wedding announcement that would be super shui, but we will see. Feng shui achieved. If they attack in here, which they probably should, we're super good. And with the Sorin and everything, oh, we're just looking tasty. We are just looking a tasty. Alright, the Cathilda is a little bit annoying, not gonna lie, but we do have answers for that, so yeah. Let's just hope we draw them, you know, <laughs> let's just... <laughs> Did we just draw it right away? Did we just draw the answer right away? I... I'm impressed. I'm freaking impressed. Okay, so the Doomscar costs 7 right now, they're on 5. Let's get rid of the Cathilda here. Just super good. Just super freaking good. And we're bringing down another little vampire token here. Okay, well, that went way better than I thought. Way better than I thought. <laughs> this is just bananas. Come on, game. Come on. And we go with the Meadow Masker here. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Here. They, they, they won away. You know, they just won away. Won away. Mirror Hall Mimic. Okay. Interesting. Pretty interesting. And not a vanishing verse. Okay. Well, let's look at the top card. We do have the live reveal. Yes. Yes, reveal. Okay. So we cannot play it right now, but we will be able to play it later. Okay, we're going with the Meadow Massacre here for. Are we doing it for something? No, we're not. We are not. We're not doing it for anything here. We're just bringing it down. And now we're uh, just getting rid of this little vampire here. Yes, yes we do, yes we do. Okay, so if they do wipe the board here, you know, if they really do that, that is super fine by me. Because uh, then we will drain them for a lot and that is all that we care about. So, and then we just refill the board once more with more vampires, more spiders, more freaking everything. They're not doing anything. And you know, the Edgar here is just, oh, so good, because those are freaking vampires. Yes, they are. Counterspell? Oh my lord. A counterspell. A Geist Snare. Reveal? Yes, reveal. Okay, we got that in our hand now. Super good. We're still drawing cards. Super good. All right. And now we're still just getting in it for four. I mean, there's no need to rush it, you know? No freaking need to freaking rush it. Like our hand is still full of stuff and uh, sooner or later we just get him. We just freaking get him. Wouldn't have gotten him now, but we will get him very freaking soon. So, they're still just not doing anything. Still just not doing anything. So we're getting rid of this little spirit here. Might seem a little overkill. They don't have an instant. They don't have a sorcery. That is just so good. Now we're bringing down the Adeline. Just slamming in there, making another human. Boom! Ors of tokens taking Nova. You know, they can't do that. They have madness. Mmm, get out of here. With your borrowed time and everything, we're back. in a 99%. Just like that. Mmm. Once more, if you have been there yesterday, you have seen how this deck performs in the past. We're going first. What is this? A trap? Is this a trap? 
So we do have the uh, Luminarch Aspirant here, which is just super freaking good. Little Tanuki, just chill, chill. Oh my, okay. Interesting. A mono green list here. But the Vanishing Verse just preys upon that, you know? The Sand Pack Leader is a super good card. But uh, is it good enough? I don't know. No blockage. No blockage at all. I mean, at the Luminarch Aspirant, we just grow over them, you know, that is super nice. And we might even just play the Soul Shatter here. Okay, they're not doing anything. Peculiar. Freaking peculiar. So, we are getting in there, and we will see what they're doing. I mean, they might be holding up like a snakeskin veil or something like that. But is that good enough? I don't think it is. So here comes the troll. No, you're still doing nothing. Alrighty, alrighty. Taken two here is fine by me. There it is, the troll. And that is a good old target for the freaking vanishing verse. Oh, if I've ever seen one, here it is. Oh my, oh yes, oh please, baby, loaf, get in here. Get freaking in here. So. We're getting in there, no matter what they do, you know, we're just overpowering them, slowly but surely. Best deck in the meta by far, not anymore, Mono Green. Not anymore. Oh, that is, that is a good card to have here, though. But is it good enough? I don't think it is. I just don't think it is. Alright, we can't afford to bring down one rat here, just in case, you know. Just in freaking case. Alright, we have kind of a stalemate here right now. But that is fine. That is absolutely fine. We're putting it on the Luminarch. And we are attacking in with the Edgar here. If they want to block it, that is fine by me. That means tokens. That means a lot of freaking tokens. A lot of freaking tokens. And soon we will have our little Cave of the Frost Dragon as well. Just slamming in there. You know, just taste it. Just taste it. So, we will see if they can tap down something here, if they want to attack my Loth right away. But if they want to play something big here, just to tap down the Asika's Chariot, they still have to do that, you know? Still have to do that. Or they just tap down these uh, little uh, caddies here, just to make sure that they have stuff. But if they do that, well, here's a Sculpture of Winter. And they're tapping down the Sculpture and this little cat. Okay, good, good, good. So... That means they have three things to attack in with. Which is a little bit annoying, but not the end of the world annoying, you know? As I always like to say. They're just going on to my Loth, like, not even chilling. Not even chilling one second. Okay. So we're blocking here, we're blocking here, and we are blocking here. I don't want him to have a snakeskin veil or something like that to uh, put onto the Asika's chariot. I still want my things to be strong enough, you know? Also, now I will keep up my Soul Shatter, so that if they bring down the Asika's Chariot, it will be Gonzo. Freaking the Gonzo. And we can still make ourselves the Spiders here now, so that is all good. Still attacking with the Edgar, all is still well. And they do have something. They're thinking about using it. They might be fighting my Luminarch Aspirant here, but do they really want that to happen? Do they really want that to happen? Yeah, that's what I thought. They don't want that to happen. Okay, so... Our loaf is still looking all right here, not worry too much, just a little bit, and we will see what they're doing here, you know, we will just see what they're doing. Like maybe I'm even drawing a card here with the loaf, who knows? Just keeping up my, uh, my Edgar, just making sure, you know, that nothing happens to that good old groom charm. So, oh, you are fighting, you are fighting, the mad lad, the freaking mad lad, okay. Interesting. Pretty freaking interesting. Because that means that we can do this now. And I think I will keep... No, you know what? Let's make some Zombos here. Because why the heck not? We do have that card for a reason and we should use it. We should freaking use it. Also, once these Zombos die, they're just super good for the Loth, you know, all of that shabwang. And now with the Cave of the Frost Dragon and everything, I think we have a very good board state here. So, hey! Even if they bring down a freaking uh, three folk here that looks like me. It's just a little too late, isn't it? 
like with the spiders and everything, just a little too late, yeah, isn't it? There's no board wipe for green. The only thing they could have here is a brand at seven, already on natural growth, that is just not good enough. That is just, and a scoop! Good game, my friend! Mmm, for the O, oh, back in the top 1,600, can we make it to the top? We will see, we will freaking see. Mm. We are for the all right now. We're up against addictive. And maybe if we win here, we can back, go back in the numbers, which would be, oh, we go in first once more. This is just craziness to me. Craziness. I've got to say, it is craziness. The Luminarch Aspirant is just so good as a starting card. If you have that in your hand, are oh, you feeling good already? It's another mono green deck. And it's just the same start as before. But it kinda is for us as well, so yeah, pretty interesting. Pretty much so. They don't have a snow source here, they aren't even playing snow sources. Alright, alright. So they might be werewolves. We will have to see about that. Alright, eh? Oh, freaking right, eh? So we're going like this. And we are going like this. I mean, that is a good old blocker here. Just a good old freaking blocker. Don't mind me if I do. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of to be expected. But right now, we just have the bigger blocker here, you know? And that is just super good. If they play another Wolfie or whatever, we still have... Oh, they are werewolves. They just are freaking werewolves. All right. All freaking right. The Howling Moon. Interesting. Pretty interesting. But no Sigur. No Sigur. All right, they're going like this. Makes sense. They attack in here. Only with that, though. Okay, good, you do that, you freaking do that. So, we're going with the black source here. We do have two vanishing verses now, two of them. And we're getting rid of the back song pop here. And we're putting our counter onto the Adeline. Keeping up our other vanishing verse, otherwise they would be making a little wolf here. And uh, I don't like that one bit. So right now we're just being a mono white deck with vanishing verses. <laughs> that is just so good. The game is going on for two minutes and we're almost already done. So yeah, is this the true master deck of like the standard right now? I think it is. And they scoop! They just scoop! We're five to freaking oh, back in the top 1,500. Our way to the top is still achievable. So let's try our best. Let's mm, freaking go. Don't you just love it? When your mom calls and she's like, do you have a second? You're like, not really good. Let me tell you a story that takes an hour. Oh my lord. <laughs> like, it's just so good. <coughs> Opponent going first here. But we do have a nice little start. You know, the Luminarch Aspirant, the Duress, the Vanishing Verse. A little panda is ready. Okay. So we're up against Mono White, I reckon. Or we're up against another Orzov list. That is also possible. And we are. We are up against another Orzov list, and it's very similar to ours. Peculiar. Pretty freaking peculiar. Okay. So they will be going to Tainted Adversary here, one bajillion percent. I kind of expected that to happen sooner or later, but uh, that's all right. If they get rid of my Luminaric Aspirant here, that is also fine by me. I don't think they will. I think they will keep the Vanishing Verse for something that seems more important here. But we will have to see. If I can find another white source, oh, I would be so happy. So happy, game. So happy. The Vatting Announcement is just such a good card. If you can get rid of it, it's worse than the Vanishing Verse. Trust me. Even though we're rocking a lot of monocolored here. But oh my lord. All right. It didn't take too long until we had a mirror match as well. And the Luminarch on their side as well. Okay, interesting. Pretty interesting. But that also means that, okay, interesting, super interesting. They're not doing anything here. I like it, I like it a lot. Okay. We are attacking in and we are getting rid of their freaking tainted adversary. If they don't block here, that is three damage to their face. And if they like want to get rid of my uh, Luminarch Aspirant, that also means that they have to, you know, Use their vanishing verse here, and then we got a free, like, free uh, road for our Sorin. And they're doing it. They are freaking doing it. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. So, Sorin, you're up. 
And I mean, we do still have the uh, we do still have the other vanishing verse, so that is super good, super freaking good. And here comes our vampire, gaining us a little bit of life, a little bit of Monica, a little bit of everything. But yeah, us going second, still not biting us, but it might be very soon. It might be very soon. If they go with the Hive the Eye Tyrant here, that's also a little bit bad. And they are. They are going with the Hive the Eye Tyrant here. All right. All freaking right. They're going face. And they're going like this. Okay, well, we will lose our Sauron here. That is nothing that I can do about that. But uh, we will just see what we're doing next. I hope not. A okay, it is a land. It was a land. Okay. So we're going with the Adeline here. We cannot go with the, uh... But that is alright, I think. Like, we're gaining life, they don't. And we still do have the Vanishing Verse, so hey. And we're just flooding the board here with creatures, so that is also very nice. And we can still Vanishing Verse at Luminarch Aspirant next turn. I think it was the right call here. I think it really was. And yes, this looks dangerous right now. And we will take seven here. But then we're slamming in for uh, six, uh, seven ourselves, eight even, eight with the life swing. So that is just super good, you know, just super freaking good. Alrighty, interesting, pretty interesting. They're just not doing anything here, and we will freaking vanishing verse you. Also, drawing all of these lands not really tasty right now. It might become tasty later, but right now it ain't. The Hagra Marlin, that is fine by me. We still have the board presence here, and we're still swinging back for it too, you know? Mm -mm. Back to 17, where we belong. If they don't have a flyer, we're looking pretty good. The Graveyard Trespasser, that is pretty annoying, not gonna lie. Especially if you have creatures in your graveyard. That is indeed pretty annoying. And another Luminarch, oh, why not? Why not just go ahead, have it all, have it all. Well, the loaf is also pretty freaking sweet here. Not gonna freaking lie. All right. And we do have the blockers for everything. So, yeah. We would just be slamming in there. Ending the turn. We're keeping a bright step left, a little blight step pathway for now. We will see if we need it for later. But right now, you know, we can just block with the loaf here. If they want to attack in with whatever, we can just block it. We can just freaking block it. They're not doing anything. I like it. I like it a lot. And they do have another Vanishing Verse, don't they? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. All right. Having another Vanishing Verse here is all right still. It's still all right. Oh, my. Yes. Yes, please. Yes, freaking please. All right. Let me do some math here. Do you really have another answer in hand? Is your last card really another freaking Vanishing Verse here? Oh, that would take it a little bit far, you know, my friend? Just a smidgen far? Like two Vanishing Verse and the Hagra Mauling already? Is that really what's happening? It is! It is really what is happening! Okay, well, so let me still do some math. So, we're, uh... Do they have creatures in here? Do they do not? And they do not. Okay, so if we're attacking in here now. That brings them to clock o'clock, you know? They have to double block here, which is super good. Yes. They're blocking like this. That is super fine by me. Super fine by me. Oh, how you doing this, my friend? You are double blocking. All right. I mean, it means the same amount of damage coming your way, but this is just super good. Because next turn, if you don't find Nancy here right away, right on top, and you will find a land because it's time to find a land for you. It is just time to find a land. And even with three creatures, it's just not enough. It just ain't. So all they can do is sacrifice their own Luminarch Aspirant, attack in then, or something crazy like that, you know? Will it happen though? I don't know. Will we go 6-0 here? Just defeating like the mirror match? I don't know. We will have to find out. Okay. There's no creatures there though. None. Zero. This only gives you life for creatures. There, those ain't creatures. Those just- And they scoop! Mmm, keys! Look at me! We did it! My beautiful boy, we did it, Fiddle Pipped! We're back on top! We're not in the top 1200 yet, 
but we freaking did it. Six, the freaking mo. Let's go. Mm. Holy smokes, keys. What have you done? You built such an amazing list. I'm so, wow. Like, I freaking love Orzov. Like, I, I got to say, I prefer like an Orzov aristocrat sacrifice everything to hell list. But this was pretty freaking cool. So, yeah. But before we get into the wrap up, like a chewing gum, first off, remember the live stream tomorrow, Monday. And uh, yeah, I want to thank all of my patrons and members because we do have the giveaway right now. And I couldn't be doing it <clears throat> without all of you. So, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thanks. To all of my patrons members, starting with Mazad, Drew, the Great Hardest, Randy Campbell, Chris Stevens, Tom Tom, Vince M. H., Vicky White, John Val, Felipe Rodriguez, C.S. Jeremy, my friends of Mike, Grave Wolf, and Mercy Day, Steve, Jonathan Norton, Empty Bag, Morphe, Luis, Philippe Sanchez Perez, Gerald Teleskevich, Nilian Juan, Jose Serran, Marcayo Frescas, Kelly Porres, Ray Graham, Cordu, Bandage, Mena, Oran, Jefferson, Perito, Sinem, Blood Dog, Vorpal, Chad Riverick, Billy Basham, Christian Rudick, Aeon, Jake, the MTG, Snake, Danny Montgomery, Lucas Zimmer, Jay Jackson, Ari Man, Azik XV, Chad in the Trainer, Ruman Gun F, Drake, Al Troll, Hyde, Curver, Derek Trota, Chris Dickman, Stan Gulecki, Psycho Drain, Stan Carlson, Alessandro Pelusi, Andrew Kelly, Bernie Jasovsky, Xadins, Juan Garcia, and Herman Dadens. A special thanks for Gold Span Dragons, Waffles, Randy K. Donald T. Jen, Human Sims 65, Willie Mai, Terrico Colomaroli, Mark Marino, your boy, Big Bizzle, Mr. Mai, Damien Tate, James Wade, Monkey Rage, Jack Top, Jess Mai, Phil, Raven Chips, Nerd, Paul English Wolf, Anima, Cthulhu and Letter, Silas Fox, Snake Bob, Tim Nowitzki, Odorific, Dan Martinez, Kevin Pratt, Med D, Isaiah MB, Trent Reese, James Brown, NL Hale, uh, ANL Hale, Timmer, Jeremiah Willard, Jonson Choba, Joe Traveler, RCP76, Brett W, Adam Shakar, Orion Winter, Danny Roma, Pathius, Christian Armstrong, Griner, Glass Onion, Ever Nothing, Load Six, and Alessandro Maschi. And a special thanks for Nico Polos, God Pharaohs, Earl, Chris Katowski, Grandoff, William Smith, Ariel Wolf, The Lacrime, Brian O'Reilly, Malchija, Quick Sneal, Jonathan Zawa, Brown Beach II, Man's Room Louis, and Matthew Donovan. From the bottom of my heart, thank you all so very freaking much. There's so many things I could never achieve without all of you so thank you very much for going the extra my supporting the channel with your heart and cash and if you dear viewer want to check out the patreon and the membership there's a button below every single video that you can check out there's a link in the description for the patreon that you can check out as well and if you like that well i would very much appreciate it but if you don't have any other cash to share, I would appreciate it even more if you keep your cash to yourself because there's other ways to support the channel like subscribing. It is free. It doesn't cost you anything and you even get a smiley for free as well. We hit the 10,000 like a week ago and we're almost at 10,250 already. That is crazy. So we're already on our way to 10,500. You guys are amazing. And we will celebrate all together in tomorrow's live stream. So make sure to be there. So this list is amazing. It is super fast as you could have seen. The Luminarch is firing, putting in some rework. The Elite Spy by not getting rid of whatever. And even the Adeline. Just such a, guy, a nice card to have here. Such a good, nice card card. I won't say good and nice at the same time, that is why I was about to say guys, but hey, if you catched it, good for you. If you didn't, I, it did never happen. So yeah, Henrico Domnati sadly didn't put in too much work today, but yesterday in the tournament, oh my lord, she won a game all by herself. So uh, a very, very nice card to have. And once more, if you flip her, I forgot to tell you, say, uh, tell you that, if you flip her, you can have another Enrico Domnati on the field. Because Enrico Infernal Seer and Enrico Domnati are two different card names. So just keep that in mind. All right, Vanishing Verse, as I promised, one of the best cards right now. Putting in so much freaking work, it is amazing. And we got them all. We even got another Ors of List in the end. So what else do you want? This is Lead Spellbinder, got rid of the wedding announcement. No, it was Duress, got rid of the wedding announcement. And we only have a one-off. So that was super lucky, but I take those. You know, I just take them. You can, you can bring them all. All right. This was the key to victory. If you want to rank up a little bit, make sure to check out this list. It is super freaking fun. I hope you're having a wonderful freaking Sunday. If you're watching One Piece like I will do right now, I hope you enjoy the new episode. If there is no new episode, I will scream. I will scream like a little girl. I'm Matches Malone, and I will see you all tomorrow.